A big thanks to MSI and Corsair for sponsoring our Computex 2018 coverage. Check out Corsair's fancy new Vengeance RGB memory, and don't forget to arm yourself with the game-changing performance that only MSI GeForce GTX 10 series graphics cards can deliver. Give yourself the competitive edge you're looking for even in the most challenging titles. Fast, powerful, and made to game. Visit the link in the description now to learn more. Welcome back to Hardware Unboxed. We're getting towards the end of Computex 2018 now, and while there haven't been as many announcements at the show as we would have liked to see, clearly the biggest and most exciting reveal was AMD's 32 core 64 thread Threadripper 2 CPU that is scheduled for release in just a few months. But the day before AMD's press event here in Taipei, Intel came out on stage and revealed a suspicious 28 core CPU running at 5 gigahertz on all cores which certainly sent the internet into a flurry at the time. Now, we didn't cover the 28-core announcement here on the channel because quite clearly this CPU is not a real product that will be coming to market in the form Intel showed it. And we're more interested in stuff that you guys will actually be able to get your hands on. But I think it's worth talking about this CPU and Intel's announcements because it quite clearly shows the difference between Intel and AMD's current high-end desktop strategies. One company is talking about actual consumer hardware at Computex 2018, while the other is demonstrating ridiculous garbage that, to be honest, really serves no purpose other than to generate headlines. So let's go back to the initial reveal of Intel's 28-core 5 gigahertz CPU. During their Computex 2018 keynote, they showed this massive CPU running at 5 gigahertz on all 28 cores, and they managed to get it running a Cinebench multi-threaded workload that produced an appropriately huge score. A lot of people went crazy over this revelation, and headlines were generated everywhere, which is pretty much exactly what Intel wanted, knowing full well that AMD would be overshadowing them the next day with the 32-core Threadripper CPU. But when this news hit, Steve and I were immediately quite suspicious about how exactly Intel managed to get this 28-core CPU running all cores at 5 gigahertz. It was quite clearly not a consumer product and not something that will ever be reaching the market in any real capacity, at least at the frequencies Intel was running it at on stage. Intel did say the CPU shown is a prototype and will be released in quarter 4, but I'll get to that a bit later. After Intel did their demonstration, various YouTubers like Paul from Paul's Hardware went over to the Gigabyte suite and exposed the Intel test system shown on stage. And lo and behold, the CPU in question is cooled using a massive air conditioner unit that's bringing the liquid cooling system's temperatures down to sub-ambient levels. That's red flag number one. Then you look at the motherboard they're using. It's a massive enterprise board using the LGA3647 socket, which is normally used for Intel's top-end Xeon processors. And at the top of the board is an outrageous 28 phase or thereabouts VRM solution with a huge heatsink and additional cooling, clearly capable of delivering massive amounts of power to this prototype CPU. And that's red flag number two. Now when you join the dots together here, it's quite obvious what we're looking at as Gamers Nexus has discussed previously. This is just an existing top-end Xeon processor like the 28-core Xeon Platinum 8180 chucked into a board capable of extreme power delivery, attached to exotic cooling, then overclocked to the absolute maximum. Presumably Presumably, this Xeon chip was also binned to a ridiculous degree such that a 5 GHz all-core overclock could be achieved. In fact, just a few hours ago, Intel confirmed to Anantec that the demonstration was indeed using an overclock CPU and was intended as an overclocking demo, not that the company mentioned that on stage. Overclocking chips like this using exotic cooling is fine and something we see enthusiasts doing all the time, but it's pretty disingenuous to say this CPU is coming to the market in Q4. There is absolutely no way we're getting a 5 gigahertz 28 core CPU as either a desktop part or as a server part. Maybe we'll get a 28 core CPU that hits 5 gigahertz as a single core turbo frequency, but 5 gigahertz all core when the flagship Xeon Platinum 8180 tops out at 3.2 gigahertz all core? Yeah, that's definitely not happening. What Intel did at Computex is the equivalent of saying an i7-8700K is a 7 GHz CPU. Yeah, sure, it can hit 7 GHz as an overclock part on an extremely high-end motherboard with exotic cooling like LN2, but no consumer is buying an 8700K and hitting 7 GHz in typical scenarios. They will be able to overclock it above Intel's rated specifications, but not the extremes possible with chillers bolted onto the CPU. And this is all in stark contrast to AMD's announcement for Threadripper 2. Their 32-core CPU is actually a real product, and it's likely coming to market in August. It will be available for consumers, they will be able to put it in existing x99 boards, and 
they'll be able to achieve the performance AMD showed on stage. After all, AMD's demo had their CPU clocked at 3 GHz base and a 3.4 GHz all-core boost, all running on air cooling with the Wraith Ripper we've shown off before. That's a totally reasonable configuration for standard users of AMD's Threadripper platform. In fact, AMD's prototype Threadripper 2 32-core CPU had a TDP of 250 watts, while Intel's 5 GHz 28-core CPU could easily have been 500 watts or even 1 kilowatt with the overclock they were using. It's not even in the same ballpark. AMD's Threadripper 2 launch was a reflection of reality, a real CPU with real specs that you'll actually be able to purchase. Intel's 5 GHz 28-core CPU is a pure fantasy for most users. And basically, this is where things currently sit with Intel and AMD's HEDT platforms. AMD quite easily had the capacity to push up to 32 cores with Threadripper 2 on the exact same TR4 socket and X399 platform. After all, they already have a 32-core Epic CPU on the market, so it wasn't exactly difficult for them to bring that technology over to HEDT. They didn't need to reinvent anything. They simply upped the number of active dies on Threadripper from 2 to 4, and bam, there's a 32-core consumer desktop CPU. AMD's brilliant multi-die approach with the Infinity Fabric interconnect makes this jump from 16 to 32 cores quite straightforward. The development work on the Infinity Fabric is now bearing fruit, ripe for picking as incredibly high-performance desktop CPUs. Intel, on the other hand, practically has their hands tied as far as HEDT CPUs are concerned. Their top-end Core i9-7980XE pushes 18 cores on the X299 and LGA2011 platform, basically pushing that platform to the limits in terms of core count. Their server chips top out at just 28 cores on a single massive die with low yields on a completely different socket and platform at prices exceeding $8,000 US dollars. To compete with Threadripper 2, Intel is being forced to rip out their LGA3647 socket from their Xeon server line and shove it into high-end desktop motherboards. Then they have to take their top-end Xeon 28-core chip that normally retails for $10,000 and possibly push clocks even higher than what that chip offers, all while remaining competitive on pricing. They're stuck in a very hard place and it's showing as desperation with their ridiculous and misleading 5 GHz demo at Computex this year. So I'm very interested to see exactly what Intel does with their HE DT line towards the end of the year, and what their 5 GHz 28 core CPU actually becomes for consumers. We know pretty well what Threadripper 2 will provide as an actual chip consumers will be able to purchase, but Intel CPU isn't going to come close to what they were showing off at Computex this year. Just needed to get my thoughts on the whole 28 core 5 GHz CPU out there. Let me know what you think about Intel's Computex announcements and Threadripper 2 in the comments below. Big thanks to our Computex sponsors for 2018 in MSI and Corsair. Don't forget to subscribe for more Computex coverage and I'll catch you in the next one.